How are we doing? How are we doing? This is Destination Denver, Colorado, and today I'm giving you a complete rundown of the cost of living situation in Denver, Colorado, and we're starting right now. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jimmy Everts, and listen, if you're interested in learning all the ins and outs, pros and cons to moving to or living around Denver, Colorado, then this is the channel for you. So that subscribe button and notification icon popping up on your screen. Make sure you click on that as I'm dropping new videos for you each and every week. And listen, as much as I love trying to get a little creative here on camera, I'm also a licensed mortgage broker covering the entire state of Colorado and teamed with some of Denver's most talented realtors, helping people move here each and every day. So the number and email you see on your screen right now, know that I am always the person answering your phone calls, answering your texts, answering your emails, there when and if you need me. Now that we're done with that fun-filled stuff, let's get to what we're here for, and that is a complete breakdown of the cost of living situation in Denver, Colorado. All right, so usually I'm making videos about certain regions of towns or certain reasons good or bad to move somewhere. Today, we're really getting into numbers. We're getting into the idea of what is it going to cost, not just to house yourself in Colorado, but to operate on a daily basis. And so first and foremost, let's talk about the overall scale of Colorado. So according to the Missouri Research and Information Center, they did a ton of calculations on overall state incomes and cost of living. Colorado ranked 34th out of 50 states, obviously, as far as overall cost of living. Now, when we look at Colorado, we got to make sure we understand that the cost of living for Colorado is one thing. The cost of living in Denver and the metropolitan area surrounding Denver is completely different. So you're going to see this consistent scale used nationwide in which national average is 100. And as an example, bestplaces.com or Sterling Places, uh, it's a couple of the resources I use, they use that 100 mark average. Now, if you look at Denver on any of those ratings, Denver's overall cost of living sits at around 127 to 127.8. So you're getting an idea that it is 27, 28% higher than that national average. But we wanna get into the nuts and bolts of what does that mean? So from a housing perspective, Denver is at 183.1, as of the making of this video, 183.1 for housing compared to the national average. For transportation, it's gonna include your gas, your insurance, uh, tolls and road work. Uh, that sits at 116.1, again, compared to that national average. Where do we make up some ground there? Well, utilities sits at about 93, and our healthcare sits at 83. Now, I have to admit, when I saw the utilities part, it made me start worrying about what utilities must look like in other states, because where, where I live here in Lakewood, uh, our bills, especially this winter, have been a lot higher. Now, on, on a national scale, you're talking natural gas, uh, you're talking electric, natural gas, uh, is much higher this year, nearly twice the cost of natural gas that's in Colorado. I can't speak for the rest of the nation. So overall, our utilities and our healthcare ranks lower than the national average. Uh, that utility for natural gas is something that I would keep my eye on. You also have a lot of solar here in Denver and, and throughout Colorado. You hear a lot about how much we enjoy our sun, how much we rely on our sun. So the utilities for solar, that that solar panel uh, propensity does bring that number down as well. But when you hear these numbers, I mean, that's all well and good. So the housing is a lot more expensive, transportation is higher, utilities, but what does that mean? So let's talk about averages here in town. So what I looked at was Denver proper, Denver city, and then that metro area outside of Denver, which stretches, you know, basically if you were talking drive time, let's say 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour if you're really talking about traffic, but basically 30 to 45 minutes, 15 to 25 miles around this city. So if you're looking for a studio apartment in Denver, as of the making of this video, the average for a studio apartment in Denver proper was $1,177. For a studio apartment in the metro area, it actually went up to $1,236. Again, that's average. You can find some below, you can find some above. Now, as you move from a studio, I jumped to a two bedroom apartment 
and the average price for a two bedroom apartment in Denver proper was $1,580. And if you looked in the Denver metro area, you were looking at an average of $1,659. Now you make that jump from two bedroom, let's go to four bedroom. A four bedroom rental in Denver proper averaged $2,382 a month. And if you were in the metro area, that number was $2,501. Now again, those numbers were based on bestplaces.com. If you look at Paycheck City, you see numbers that are similar but not exact but that's to give you a general idea of what you're looking at from a cost basis here. And let's be real, I have people moving here, we talk about rentals all the time, uh, and if people want uh, an upper echelon, if you will, of rentals, obviously they're going above those prices, and if people are really looking to skimp, and perhaps location isn't as crucial to them, you can certainly find less. You can certainly find rents lower than that average. And on the flip side, you talk about purchases. The median price for homes in Denver proper as of the making of this video sat at 534,000. The median home nationally sat at 291,000. Now, you can look at a lot of different reports. Uh, that again was from best places. The National Association of Realtors, their numbers were different. They had Denver's median price about 20 grand higher and they had the median uh, national average price a little bit lower. But again, to give you a general idea, housing in Denver is not cheap from a national average standpoint. Now, when I started researching this, I think it's important that we have to understand where are people coming from? Because at the end of the day, if I tell you Denver is expensive, well, expensive for what? If I tell you Denver is not expensive, well, not expensive as far as what? So let's talk about some maybe, perhaps, obvious factors. Uh, when we looked at, I'm gonna show you a little map here. So looking at areas of the country, that may find Denver to be more expensive than where they are now. And you're looking throughout the South. You're looking in the Mississippis, the Alabamas, the Arkansas, the Louisiana. The cost of living of moving from those regions to Denver tends to be uh, a dramatic increase in your expenses. We see the same through the Midwest, your Ohio's, your Pennsylvania's, your Wisconsin's, where if you're making the move from these locations, odds are Denver is going to be more expensive for you. Now, on the flip side of that coin, when we talk to people on the West Coast, when we talk to people in California, Oregon, up into Washington, Seattle, San Francisco, LA, their movement to Denver is one of more affordability. They are not blown away, for the most part, by Denver's numbers. And we see the same thing in the New England region, uh, and that's, that is dependent, because I'll talk to folks in, in parts of New Hampshire, Vermont, where coming down here is more expensive, but New England tends to be more expensive. And then you'll have your offshoot cities. Florida, by and large, is going to be less expensive to live than Denver is, unless you are in you know, regions of Miami. Virginia, West Virginia, Delaware, tends to be less expensive than Denver. Shouldn't have added Delaware, kind of made that, no, kid. Uh, and then you look at areas like uh, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, those areas, again, average tends to be a little below where Denver is, but folks in Washington, D.C. deal with a very high cost of living. That move to Denver tends to, again, give them more affordability. And so I started looking at this and trying to figure out exactly what that looked like. So compared a handful of cities for you here. So if you were, let's say, moving from San Francisco to Denver, well, according to Payscale, which collects a lot of payroll data and a lot of expenditure, expenditure data, if I can get my mouth to work, the cost of living in Denver is about 41%, 40.7% lower than it is in San Francisco. The cost of housing in Denver is 57% lower than it would be in San Francisco. Seattle, it gets a little bit better. Denver is roughly 24% lower as far as its cost of living in, than Seattle, and housing is 37% lower. Then you get a couple other hotbeds, a couple other cities that we hear a lot in Denver. I have people who call me all the time and they say, hey, I'm looking at Austin, Texas, and I'm looking at Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm looking at you, Denver. So Austin, Denver is actually 10% higher on the cost of living. However, we are actually 19.7% lower than their cost of housing right now. Whereas Nashville, Denver was just under 15% higher for cost of living and just under 33% higher for cost of housing. 
I have to admit, when I looked at the numbers of Nashville and I looked at a few different sites, I thought even though Tennessee as a whole, you would imagine is going to be lower than Denver as far as cost of living, I thought those numbers would be a bit closer together and they weren't. So at least based on several websites and their averages, you're seeing Denver is still a much more expensive city than Nashville and the gap between Denver and Austin is getting a little bit closer as time goes by. And then there were some that, uh, you know, we get a lot of folks that are moving here from Raleigh. So I looked at Raleigh, North Carolina, Denver's cost of living, 16% higher than Raleigh overall. Housing was 43% higher. Uh, had a couple clients move here from Jacksonville recently. According to Payscale, 19.3% higher as far as cost of living, moving from Jacksonville to Denver, and housing was nearly 50% higher in Denver than in Jacksonville. Now those are your general stats. Those are the things that we can lean on. Where are you moving from and is the area you are in now going to cause your cost of living and your cost of housing to increase or decrease coming to Denver? A lot of these factors are also going to play into, are you moving here for a job? Are you moving here with the same job? Are you remote? All of those factors. I think there is an offsetting factor. You have people who, uh, again, you say you, you're working for a company in San Francisco, making some great money, and now you're gonna move to Denver. You're working remote, your, your pay is going to stay the same. That might be a huge increase in how much money you keep in your pocket. Obviously the exact opposite. Uh, if you're in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, all love to Biloxi, Mississippi. I love me some John Grisham, but you know if you're making Biloxi money and you're moving to Denver, that might become complicated. Now, trying to genuinely give you some insight into what living in Denver is like from a cost standpoint, I mean, let's be real, it can be a little tricky. You know, if you're going to your local Starbucks for coffee each morning, you're gonna spend $3.80. If you go to a local coffee joint in Cherry Creek, that same coffee is gonna cost you $5.80. Uh, there are restaurants in town where you and, and, a, and a partner, a friend, whatever, could go out, have a couple drinks, have a bite, spend $70, $80. And then there are places right around the corner where that same meal, couple drinks, and all of a sudden your check is $150. I think, and I've said this in some other videos, Denver had has reached a point where it, it kind of feels itself. It feels a little bougie. There are times where you go into restaurants where your meal should not cost what it did. Your drinks should not cost what it did. But Denver has just kind of hit that point. And I, I, I hate to say it, and I'm sure there's people watching this video who are gonna be like, dude, you just keep repeating yourself but I feel it just comes from where you are coming from. I'll give you a perfect nonsensical example. I travel out to New York uh, a couple weeks ago for the Super Bowl and I see, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, I haven't like 20 years, but I see in the parking lot a gas station says a pack of Newport cigarettes is $13.80. Now, I had to look in Denver, it's like $7.80, but I mean, that blew my mind, $13.80 for a pack of cigarettes. I mean, at that point, just have somebody sock you in the lungs as hard as they can. So overall, I think you have to look really hard at, at where you're coming from, where you wanna be. Are you moving to Denver for a job? Uh, we're seeing, you know, the economy and job growth in Denver has been solid for an extended period of time. However, with everything that's happening, you know, we're talking right now, it's February of 2023, certain things are constricting, tech jobs constricting, economic jobs constricting, finance, what have you, uh, oil and gas constricting to some extent. So, you know, if you are moving here with the position, knowing how much money you're gonna make, certainly puts you in, in the driver's seat. If you're moving here and you're not really sure what your income looks like, you don't know what your employment situation is gonna look like, that may be uh, a bit trickier. And do I see that cost coming down? Uh, I do not. We've seen some good news on the apartment front in Denver. For a, a long time, there was uh, nearly a halt on condos being built and apartments being built uh, due to some legality issues here in Denver, primarily when it came to condos. Now, a lot of that has been alleviated. So you are seeing more construction in that space. I think one of the struggles that they've had in Denver as far as building apartments and building condos 
was that they were building at, at a near luxury level because the cost to build was so high that they needed to build nicer places so that they could charge more money from them for them. That's the only way they could really break even. We're seeing a bit of breathing room on that. Will that last? Will it create a bit more affordability? I don't believe so. I think Denver is going to continue to have housing issues, which is why you see the cost of housing. There's a lot of places we talked about where the cost of living isn't as bad, but the cost of housing is extreme. Again, Colorado on an average, 183 on that 100 scale, 183 compared to a 100 average. But knowing your numbers, knowing what your job situation looks like, knowing who you are moving here with. Is it just on you? Or are you moving here with a partner, friends? Do you have resources here? Huge to understand those things. The good news is, at least for this moment, these videos free for you all day. So no cost of living issue here. And any questions you have about it, any discussions you wanna have about it, that's a perfect opportunity to hit me up. The phone number, the email popping up on your screen, know that I am always the person. Answer your phone calls, answer your texts, answer your emails there when and if you need me. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. That was a complete breakdown of cost of living in Denver, Colorado. Until I see you next time, peace.